Howdy ho, neighbor Reno. So Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Today, what I'm gonna be covering is the news. Uh, so Bronco, Ford, and F-150 related news. So this video is about the chip shortage and the difference between Ford and GM's response to this chip shortage, as well as how this will affect your Bronco and F-150 orders. The information is gathered from Reuters News, Jim Cramer's Mad Money, and info from Ford, of course, and what I've been seeing in deliveries coming in from the, the factory. Uh, so I'm gonna be covering all that, but that's not all. I'm also gonna be covering uh, news for the 2021 Bronco in regards to the hard tops. Uh, so all hard top Bronco models have awesome news uh, in regards to the sound deadening headliner. Uh, it's free of charge, however, I wanna make sure that you do get that, um, that sound deadening headliner. So, you know, watch to the end of the video because I'm gonna be covering how you will get the sound deadening headliner and what you need to do to make sure that you do do get that. It means for some of you, you're not gonna to have to do anything. And for others, you're definitely gonna to have to uh, get active and uh, hit, 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 your, hit to the streets and get down to uh, your dealer or give them a call. So I'm gonna cover exactly what you need to do for that. I don't want any of you missing, missing out on that sound deadening headliner that we see right here. And I'm also gonna be talking about, you know, whether you should go with that sound deadening headliner or not. Now, finally, I will also cover news on the oil pan for the 2.7 liter engines. Uh, so that's the engine option on the big Bronco. Now, if you want to help this channel out hit the like button early on. So, you know, welcome to the channel if you're new. If not, you know, howdy ho, neighborino. Uh, if you're part of the community already, if you're not, jump in, join the community by uh, subscribing. And if you hit the like button, that certainly helps this channel out if you hit it, uh, hit it early on in the video. Um, now, if you do subscribe, my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be covering the XLT Sport, F-150 2021 XLT Sport with all its innovation. I love that one. I think it's a great value for the money. And I'm also gonna be covering what you can do with the 2.7 liter engine. So I wanna, in a future video coming shortly, I wanna debunk what is wrong or what people think is wrong with the Bronco's 2.7 liter engine and what can be done for more power for less money part two, deuce. Now, I doubt the sh chip shortage is actually going to affect that much the Bronco or the F-150. And I don't think it's gonna affect too much the Ranger because those are all high profit margin, uh, pr profit margin vehicles for Ford. Now, the chip shortage has caused two problems though. The two main problems are, are being caused by too few plants that are actually producing them. And most of the chips are being produced uh, in Taiwan and South Korea with, um, you know, the, this chip shortage really is being caused by less planes in the air. That's, that's the main issue. Uh, and it's not one that's being talked about a whole lot. It's actually Jim Cramer on Mad Money that uh, mentioned that. And it makes a ton of sense. Uh, chips now at the moment because there's less planes in there they're not just throwing you know uh, transported goods into uh, the cargo bays of passenger planes uh, with a lot less planes in the air these chips are going by sea and this is causing a bottleneck effect that's when you have a whole lot of something trying to pass through something smaller and that something smaller is sea transport. Sea transport in the first place is slow. It hasn't gotten much faster since, you know, the 1800s. So not a whole lot of technological advancement in regards to speed for sea transport. So that's one main issue and one main problem going on right now. Now the chip shortage, which has hit automakers globally, stems from a confluence of factors. Car makers shut North American plants for two months during, uh, during our recent uh, health issues, uh, the pandemic, and last year, uh, some also canceled chips. Now, others also uh, boosted their, their, their chip orders, like Toyota, so way to go, Toyota. You, you, you did the right call on this. 
uh, you for I guess you foresaw that people would not be buying less cars and what I've seen at Ford actually is an increase of truck purchases uh, people not being able to really vacation easily uh, by plane are buying campers and these campers that are being bought need to be pulled by something and hey the f-150 is a great vehicle for pulling a camper a trailer and whatnot so it's a great pulling machine so we've got a huge uptick in truck sales uh, meanwhile demand for chips surged uh, all across the board not just at ford but all across the board um, and you know a big part of that is you video game players <laughs> it's partially your fault uh, there's been, with people being at home, there's been a lot of people buying systems, uh, computer chips in either, you know, their Xbox, PS4, or better chips for, you know, their, their PCs. And this has caused a chip shortage. And also all the people working at home um, who were picking up extra commuter, uh, computers, this has definitely caused a, a major problem. There are more chips being uh, demanded. However, it's not as if factories can't just produce more chips so a lot of the problem does come down to uh, the whole transport issue now ford said saturday uh, it will idle its uh, ohio assembly plant uh, so i guess what ford uh, sorry this wasn't exactly uh, this past saturday uh, as a previous saturday ford definitely uh, had to slow down production and just while this is up here i want to cover your sound deadening headliner that you see right here in the photo it is free of charge however you don't have any you don't have to do anything if you don't have a vinyl interior so for tissue interiors and leather interiors and those leather interiors will cause a late delivery but you're automatically going to have that sound deadening material added to your vehicle however if you have a vinyl interior marine grade so that means badlands orders anyone who's ordered a badlands and anyone who has ordered uh, a black diamond you need to either go down or call your dealer and make sure that they add it now the reason it's not being automatically added makes sense the sound deadening material is kind of like a, a fabric and they're forwards thinking for people that are getting you know the the off-road wet editions you could say the ones made to be to get wet with the rubberized flooring they're thinking maybe these people won't want uh, fabric on the roof now I don't know what kind of off-roading you're going to do that would have that much splash go on to your tops and why you can just remove them. So being that this sound deadening material really should help, uh, Ford was charging $495 for this option. Now it's free of charge. If you have a vinyl interior, uh, I really do suggest that you consider having it added to your vehicle. I think it's really going to help out with highway driving. I don't see it making much of a difference. Uh, in town at uh, town driving speeds, but on the highway, I think it's gonna be a big perk. Now, sorry for that interruption, getting right back into um, the, the, the chip issue. So Ford slowed down production, and from what I saw in production numbers, they also pretty much stopped producing for a period of time the EcoSport, which is not a high profit uh, vehicle for Ford, and the Edge. I really don't expect Ford to ever stop produce, production on the F-150. It's uh, the best selling automobile in, Nor in, in the US. And they've got the reputation on stake for that model. And that brings me to the Bronco. So many people have been waiting for this vehicle. So many people have, you know, uh, gotten rid of their re reservation when multiple delays were announced by Ford there's a lot of anticipation on the Bronco and I really do not expect Ford to slow down production because of chips I think they'll shift where they put those chips that's what I've seen already this year and it's what I expect to see so I'm not too stressed about the Bronco now how did this affect the F-150 well yeah the F-150 it's it's a complex problem because normally 95% uh, of inventory uh, of sales on Ford trucks is dealer inventory. And now it's the opposite. And I'd say about 95% of Ford truck sales are orders. So that has definitely added to the complexity of the situation. And I can definitely observe that normally a truck, once it's ordered, I would have been waiting, 
you know, normally you'd expect two months. You'd expect two months for your new truck to come in. And now it's more like three, even four months. Um, I've heard and seen personally even five months. Uh, that's usually when you have uh, something in your order that is like a late arrival or they just didn't have it uh, at factory so most of the time I've been I've been seeing in the last six months uh, about a three month uh, sometimes four month delivery time uh, also part of what Ford is doing is they're gonna be continuing to build uh, F-150s and now and edges and now their ma match plan is you know produce the vehicle don't slow down the plant but then you park the vehicle uh, you park the f-150 until the missing parts come in and then you add them in and ship them out uh, i think this has been a pretty good strategy because ford has continued to produce a lot of f-150s uh, if you order one no one's going to tell you hey you can't have your f-150 uh, just like the bronco um, it's, I haven't heard yet, you know, at my, my local dealer that were promised basically give or take 25, I haven't heard of that being reduced to, let's say, you know, half of that or, you know, 30% less. So I doesn't appear that the chip shortage is going to affect the Bronco. I'd say like the F-150, if anything, um, it could just make it that from the time you order yours, if your dealer still has an allotment, the time of production obviously is gonna be a little slower uh, like it has been for the F-150. Um, so yeah, this, however, the waiting for parts to come in is apparently, according to Ford, gonna affect thousands of orders, but they're not shutting down, uh, completely shutting down too much um it they, ford has said that uh, there'll be idle production at plants in Louisville, kentucky and cologne germany now that might sound real bad but let's compare that to gm right now gm said it would extend downtime at plants in fairfax kansas and ingersoll ontario to at least mid-april and in I'm going to pronounce this wrong, not deliberately, sorry, hope I don't offend anyone, but San Luis Potosi, Mexico, through the end of March. In addition, it will idle its Gravate plant in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in April and May. So that's huge. But there's more. Uh, GM has also talked about uh, delivering GM trucks with uh, one chip less in it. And that's going to affect its functionality. I'm going to get to that in just a moment, um, but I'm not. I'm not expecting something like this out of Ford. Now, the Detroit automaker had previously extended production cuts at three North American plants. This is for uh, GM into mid-March, and said vehicles at two other plants would only be partially built. Now, following Wednesday's cuts forecasting firm auto forecast solutions estimated uh, that GM would lose about 216,000 units of production globally for the year uh, but that's that that's not the problem that uh, I, I have here the issue I have is that uh, GM said that they're gonna deliver trucks with one less chip in them and that chip is for managing cylinder deactivation so it's a fuel management chip that allows the vehicle to shut down cylinders so the effect of not having cylinder deactivation is only affecting one mile per gallon now for roughly uh, 16,000 mile, uh, miles per year that one mile per gallon is about a hundred dollars at the end of the year so why do you have cylinder deactivation I, unless this technology costs next to nothing, I wouldn't want to be, be paying more for my vehicle because it has a technology that saves me $100 per year. Now, of course, I, you know, I'm not an expert uh, whatsoever on the GM product and this exact technology. So I don't know if maybe, you know, this, this process is only costing them, you know, $200. And if so, they're throwing that on to the customer. And if that's the case, you know, $200, you have the vehicle two years, you break even because of the technology. But I, I think it does illustrate how much automakers are really being forced to chase after uh, those extra 
miles per gallon, even when it's one mile per gallon. So cylinder deactivation, uh, I'm not all that impressed, uh, one mile per gallon. But, you know, is GM really going to call you up? Uh, because chip shortages are supposed to last throughout all 2021. Are they really going to call you up in 2022 as chips start to be more available and say, hey, come on down and get your chip. We'll fix that up. Well, that remains to be seen, but I certainly don't like the idea of taking delivery of a vehicle that's not complete. So uncompleted trucks, though, come on, seriously? When will they honestly call you up to offer you that add-in to be seen? Not all that impressed. Complicating matters uh, in all this though was a severe storm in Texas. Um, now that uh, that did affect a semiconductor uh, plant, uh, a chip plant in Texas. So it's not as if the U.S. has no chip plants, but uh, there are solutions. Uh, you know, last week uh, Biden said he would seek uh, 37 billion dollars in funding to help out chip manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, through an executive order and also review the whole uh, U.S. supply chain for critical products, uh, also uh, including uh, vehicle batteries and rare earth minerals. What does this really mean? Well, this is pretty interesting uh, and it's actually a pretty good uh, sign for our Broncos, uh, especially, you know, a lot of us are going to be getting our Broncos near the end of 2021 uh, and even 2022 if you picked some of the options uh, that caused delays that I've talked about in um, my previous videos. If you want to check those out, you'll get a full list. I'm not going to cover that now. Um, but so, you know, this isn't going to get resolved overnight, uh, especially not the manufacturing of chips in the U.S. However, within six to 12 months, existing American production of chips will likely increase in existing facilities and uh, you know I, I even see extra facilities in the foreseeable future the usa cannot be dependent on something that is essential for its security in both uh, manufacturing so the economy that's a security issue having a strong uh, economy and the military complex so a stable and healthy economy is required for long-term stability and security so in other words what I'm saying is these chips are gonna get produced at a much faster rate in the in, in, in the existing facility and I definitely expect uh, more facilities to pop up in the near future so the impact on the F-150 is, I'd say, within six months to a year, this is going to be, you know, all sorted out. Uh, I'd expect uh, trucks to be, from the time you order them to the time, time they come in, back down to two months. In the meantime, we'll be looking, continue to look at three, four months when you're really unlucky, maybe five, um, because you have, uh, you have an order that has something that just doesn't want to be produced uh, for example like the, the 2021 reclining seat the full reclining seat is causing very long orders and it's going to end up being uh, for a lot of people late orders so maybe more this summer or even fall uh, I'll keep you updated on that once I know once I get an actual build date on someone who has ordered a reclining 2021 uh, seat so you know more trucks are being sold they're the number one selling automobile uh, not just for Ford, but period. So Ford's not going to risk the reputation on this. Too many people are anticipating the Bronco. There's already been so many delays. I think shit, Ford will shift the pain uh, of the chip shortage to other models, models that are less anticipated and less required. You know, if you're a construction company, you need a truck. Uh, if you're a family, you can probably maybe last tough out a little longer your current vehicle instead of getting an EcoSport. Um, and then also there's all the whole idea that if you go in for an EcoSport and they don't have one available, but they have an Escape available, chances are you'll get an Escape. Lease-wise, they're not that far off in price anyway. So, you know, on models where there's an easy solution, uh, I think that's where Ford is going to take, uh, take the hit. And they're not going to take the hit on the Bronco. So good news for Bronco owners. I don't see this chip shortage as something that should really be stressing us out too much. So I hope this has been helpful. 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Upcoming, I will cover the 2.7 liter debunking what people think's wrong with it. Um, I do want to drop some final news. Uh, I've looked into uh, the parts department and the 2021 F-150 oil pan is still composite. Um, so what I would suggest for the Bronco and what I would think is that it's also going to be a composite oil pan. And if you want to go off-roading with it, what I suggest is uh, you put... Um, a cover you, you, you get that covered uh, either aftermarket or you know take the Badlands or the Black Diamond it already comes with undercarriage protection uh, those skid plates uh, but if your model doesn't have skid plates uh, like the F-150 you can add it on I'm sure someone if not definitely Ford but someone and multiple people should be offering skid plates so that's my piece of advice get skid plates if you're worried about that composite oil plant pan uh, bumping up on something and leaking oil everywhere and popping your motor if you didn't notice. Good luck, good week, and you know, I wish you all more cars and more power.